Um, so the suggestion that I propose for this one, um, if people are interested in it, is you have a one-way ticket to Mars. The big questions that I would have is, would you take it? What would you do on Mars with the rest of your life while you're there? And this new colony that's set up, or being set up. And um, you know, I guess those are kind of the two root questions. I would imagine on. you're saying that it didn't have to be Mars, why it could be anything else? It could be anything else. I mean, let's say this is well, the, what, what, what is the program where they're going to make a reality series out of it? Mars it's Mars 1. It has Mars 1? Yeah, this, this isn't Mars 1, so mm -hmm. you don't have like a TV crew right. to be watching you. This is like. Well, you yeah. This is like 20 years in the future. There's already you know, the foundation of Mars. Basically, your life savings to get there. You have the option of a free trip home. That's what he said. We're going to have to get the space back somehow. We're going to have to get the home trip. got to go back. So that's kind of the, the scenario. So, so wait, you mentioned to yeah, that's true. You're not guaranteed one way. There's but but well, let's say financially it's a one way trip. Financially, yeah, it's a one -way you trip. might talk yourself into going because well, there's a potential of coming back, but you're not really going to be able to do it. Yeah. You're not. You don't have the money to, to spend on the return ticket. Anyways, um, so that's the scenario. Yeah. I am like Elon Musk. I want to die on Mars. Just not in that. Yeah, <laughs> and that is a great line. Speaking of speaking of getting the public's attention. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I think it was even that Zach yeah. Schmidt, who was the last. Was it the last? Jack Schmidt was the. Uh, he was the geologist. Yeah, depending on who you ask, the last thing he said for the last thing, the first set for the last thing to take us to the moon. But anyways, he's, he's a geologist by training, and he went to the moon, and he's told NASA, "I'm coming in, guys. Just send me on a rocket, send me to Mars, and I will happily just go around there, and I will." Hit rocks with my hammer until I die. And with him, I could see that really being true because he really is that kind of a geologist. Yeah. That would be such a wonder to be there, he first. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back. Some people, were, my dad always asked me, why would he even need this lush, beautiful, life pole planet for some sort of thing in dead, cold, red, mm -hmm. nothing, nothingness, mm -hmm. the epitome of nothingness. And I'm like, that's right. <laughs> and Magnificent and Desolation exactly. was one of the perfect so, examples of that. He's right, though. When most people probably would not, mm -hmm. all it takes is half of What, a fourth of a percent? And not that, even that. Not even that. Fract. Well, see, that's a, a, one of the things that I found fascinating about uh, whatever you call about space tourism or space adventurism or private space or whatever, that the baseline is how many people the cost of doing a round the world cruise. That's the baseline for, for all of us. Because that's what they're roughly basing the cost around and how many people who have the money and are willing to do it. And that became the start of all of this in, in that what regard. Around $200,000 for one of these fancy round the world cruises. And uh, and there's people who do that. And, uh, and uh, you know, and that, and and, it, and it's a, it's a matter of can you afford it, and are you interested? I mean that rapidly dwindles the numbers because and, and, and people that like go to the top of uh, Everest. Uh -huh. yeah. Like, yeah, there's not a whole lot of those, but but there are so many that they're now trying to figure out how to get rid of all of the trash. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? There's a trash a, problem on Everest. Is that a good problem or a bad problem? Uh -huh. go up there and they'll leave gear. Uh -huh. well, and they'll only get so far and then they'll abandon, yeah. Yeah. abandon everything and come back. And, uh, You'll have crew members that go up there and die and you're not going to carry their gear back down. Well, they're not carry, right. Yeah, you leave their body up there. Uh -huh. you're, you're not going to carry all their effects. You might carry a few personal items to take a lot more, but you're not going to carry everything. Mm -hmm. It's true, though, if, you, if you're going to. You have a potential of dying itself trying to carry it back or leaving them. Yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of the main landmarks going up is a, is a body, the green um, boots or whatever they call them. That's how you know when you're getting close to them. <laughs> it is, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> what does I say about people who still try? Yeah. <laughs> you want to pass a dead body so that yeah. you fail before <laughs> I don't think any person that eventually space will be like that. It's only oh, a, matter of, a, a matter of time before somebody's going to die. Uh -huh. In space. We have all these actors going up on way down. Uh -huh. But someday, 
it will happen. Someday we will look up and say there's a dead body. That's right. Um, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, and, and, and will the first dead body be somebody who wanted to be buried there and they shot them there? You know, sure. there's, there's already people in orbit now that are dead. It's their cremains. <laughs> but but uh, well, that's what that's the technical term. It's cremains. Uh, uh, it's like uh, like uh, uh, a, about an ounce or something, and they just, they jam a whole yeah, they just jam a whole bunch of. Yeah, well, it was like a collection of and here they shot him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's done that yet, but I think these orbital things are like a thousand dollars an ounce. It's just a real powerful rail gun. <laughs> that's right. Well, and of course, you know, that's one of the aspects. How quickly? Because I was just reading what is it? Holloman orbits. Holloman orbits. Uh -huh. Transfer orbits. You know. Yeah, uh, you know, if, if you if you use a very weak rocket, just barely enough to get into low Earth or low Earth orbit, and then you use gravity assist, you can manage to get yourself anywhere in the solar system if you're willing, if you're willing to pay with time to do that. So you don't have to have a very far rocket. Yeah, yeah. I'd say like the. Not our because of the that's right. That's right. The grand alignment. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, so I want to go to Mars to die. What was the question about? Well, there's pretty much just what would you do with your time there. I, mean, uh -huh. I think that would probably be the implication there to tell you. <laughs> die. <laughs> die. <laughs> it's true. Okay, well, the point. What and you know, and what for me, as much as I enjoy stuff and everything, I don't think I'd want to go, even if I had the money. Because you know, now I'm at this point where I've got a granddaughter that you know is more interesting to me, teaching her things and doing things with her than it would be to go to Mars at this point. But if I did, I think I'd want to do Alpha from from from, from Mars. You know, I want I want to talk about the experience. I want to share the experience. I want to tell people. If, if I could really afford to just do anything I wanted, <coughs> I'd want to relate what was going on. I, I, I wouldn't want to be the geologist out there tapping yes. on the rocks. I agree. That, that would be me. Yeah. I, mean, I might be well, very fascinated you know, in your research. Yeah. And, and just like what we experience in our life now, being interested in space and other people don't know. <laughs> everything, that, everything anybody's interested in, you know, probably 99% of the rest of people are like, I <laughs> How many, I mean, you know, back, back to down to earth and stuff and things relating this to people. How many people could be a farmer? That's what I was just going to say. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think the big thing I would probably do on Mars, I do love green uh -huh. I think the big thing I would try to do as best possible, technology possible, is like the Earth. Yeah. Try to make it as earthly as possible, even if it is in a confined space. And one of the things I was going to mention to you earlier was Red Mars. Green Mars, Blue Mars. Fantastic. It really is. I mean, they need to read me. Yeah, yeah because because what basically what they are talking about is a level of technology that's not that far away. No, no, at least the first one. Uh, and yeah, and that the key element that was really so kind of out there was immortality. Mm -hmm. That's really immortality. It was just they were living for hundreds of years because of. Treatments. Well, yeah, but it, it, it was effectively immortality. It was pretty much it was pretty much if you decided not to or something whacked you, you could live forever. Yeah, and it had a it was expensive. It had to do with nanotechnology and stuff. And then when then when the the big movement of the ice off of Antarctica caused worldwide floods, then you get this panic of people wanting to go to Mars. I think, yeah, I think this is the uh, so it wasn't like the earth was forming up, we were falling That right, yeah, because I can, yeah, 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 it was a volcano under the ice because it is there. Yeah, but think about immortality, though, right? Like, I mean, if you're living on Mars and you're living in a very controlled environment, you're living in an environment in which you are controlling. I mean. Probably have a significant nuclear uh, pathogens 
Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, for that reason, yeah, you might, you just might naturally live longer because you don't have the swine flu coming by every couple of years, <laughs> or the avine flu. Or that. That. I'm just going to be super careful with those because I mean, some of those pathogens they have sent to space have become much more aggressive. So if somebody oh, yeah, accidentally. Like well, like, and, and back to the mole problem in yeah. the space station. You know? and, and would it counteract the effects of stress on the human body just being in? I mean, we're we're adapted. Oh yeah, pretty much yeah. For this planet. So. Well, and that's one of the, the things that, that in fiction that, that people have speculated on. We're going to have generations that grow up on moon or, uh, moon or Mars, never seeing them, and Mars. never being able to live on Earth mm -hmm. because their systems couldn't take. They might might visit in exoskeletons and things like that that they would never be able to live there. Because on people, most people don't think about this, but Earth is the largest solid body object in the solar system. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, Venus is just like us. Just like I hadn't really thought about that, See, but yeah. <laughs> because the gas giants are not, you know, you you you, you can. You could get some point of equilibrium where you could float around I'm sure, yeah. and have floating things. That's why if you could land something on Earth, like the dragon capsule, uh -huh. try not trying to walk up in here, but if you land like a dragon capsule on Earth with the thrusters on it, and the other solid body. That's right. Anyways, most people don't think about that. So. What would you do on Mars? <laughs> would you go? Not a one way trip. I, that's an awful far. I'd like to go to the moon, but I don't, know, I don't know how I'd like to go to Mars. What's your definition of not too far? Moon. Moon. <laughs> that's just, it's like, but, 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 do I understand, you're not saying it's actually the distance, it's that you would not be able, you're, you're, it's just a, you don't want the one way. Yeah, I don't want the one way trip. Fair enough. So you can, yeah, I think a one way trip is, um, yeah, I think a one way trip going there to live, again, would be willing. Well, it's inevitable, it would be a small, small, small. Oh, yeah, small. absolutely. It might even be on the order of tens of thousands. It, yeah. It grows because of population. Uh huh. You're basically talking just replicating what people were doing with the new world. Mm -hmm. People left Europe to come to America, and yeah. they, they, they were probably ever there. Mm -hmm. you know? well, even the, even the, the East Coast and the West Coast, <laughs> Coast <laughs> there, in a practical manner, they could go back, but yeah. they weren't going to go back. The new frontier. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We're making life here. Mm -hmm. No, it's never because you're on the same planet. You, you saw a dream when you left Europe. And yeah, 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 that's right. That yeah. is the only dream I have. Always, always like, you know, psychological factor. There, there, there's an aspect of that, but it, but it does come back to this magnificent desolation. You know, you know, there's people who have gone to the mar to the moon and went, "Wow, this is so beautiful." You know, there's the same beauty on Mars. The only difference with Mars, uh, and I'm sure you may have the help of you to do quite this. There are some people out there who are like diehard people, um, but even then, I don't think we can get any the lunatics. <laughs> okay. I love that's the movie. I love the movie. We're fine. We need to have, have all the. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, uh, between Moon and Mars, Mars is the only one that has the potential to be Earth. That's true. You know. Right. I, no, 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 no. I disagree. I think Zenus, it would take a lot more terraforming, but you could. You could that, uh, that's arguable, yes. I, yeah. I mean, you have to run this and talk about that. And and, and 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 it might not be technology that's with like right now we could redirect comets bombard Mars get a lot more moisture a lot more atmosphere or we no actually it no, really is true. I mean, it just seems like a really I, I don't know like it's not it's not conventional thought. <laughs> yes. What's the word I'm looking looking for? No, no, like. I don't know. Oh, the rocks probably been one. Redneck way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very, very good. It is Mars. It's a redneck. It is a very good idea. So, so, but, but, but that's, that's a proposal. It's a very long term proposal because you're going to kick up massive amounts of dust and things. Yeah. Doing that. Well, I'm going to say that you're going to kick up massive amounts of dust and things doing that. But you've now increased the moisture. You've increased the, the thickness of the atmosphere. And everything else becomes so much more doable if you manage those two things. Now, on a more practical basis, there has been discussions of mining ice out of comets, the rings of uh, ring system of, of uh, Saturn, uh, maybe uh, asteroid ice mining. Some people have talked also about um, basically using in situ resource utilization and basically super greenhouse gases and pumping those. Yeah, yeah. And, and what you would do in the case of ice mining, 
is you would strap a fission uh, rocket on the, on the tail end of it, and you would melt the ice and feed that water in there and basically have steam propulsion. And when you get to uh, uh, Mars, you would literally turn that around and you would land it, a big chunk of ice on Mars. And, uh, and that you would actually be on it, controlling it while you were doing that. Uh, but what he's saying is, we now know there's ice on Mars and other materials, and that we could use this, the resources there to build up the atmosphere and the moisture. We also have to notice that Mars once had a bitter atmosphere. Absolutely. Much right. there. Uh -huh. I mean, that's true. You can conclude that by facing the fact that there was one water in the surface of the mm -hmm. past. Lots of and if you did absolutely that, nothing, and you just did greenhouses, you could live water in a, 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 a suit on Mars. <laughs> Um, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have to even be a pressure suit. For example, curiosity is just something to protect your your, your your from freezing and to give you enough uh, oxygen to keep you going. So you'd probably have to be completely covered, but you could go out without a pressure suit and walk on Mars as is. Wait, after, after the atmosphere? Bro. No, no, no. You'd have to be completely enclosed, and you'd have to have your own oxygen source. Right now, you yeah. have a pressure suit. No, I mean, you know, no, you you could have just a suit. But it, you couldn't have anything exposed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying a yeah. pressure suit on Mars or some sort of suit. Well, yeah. um, you think you wouldn't need it to be. You don't need to counter the, You wouldn't need the suit to counter the pressure. Once, once, the, once the pressure increases, basically, you pretty much stop. Well, I think yeah. even now there's enough pressure. But so it's 100%, it's 1 of what we have here. What is the proportion of uh, like the water in the universe relative to, say, Something like we don't know. silver. I mean, uh, that's a good question. We can tell you what it is on Earth. Yeah. We can probably start to tell you about what it is on Mars. We are yeah. learning it's much more abundant than we thought. Yeah. Everywhere we, even on Titan, there's water. It's but but it's not in the form of <coughs> liquid water. It's solid rock ice, so solid it's not about rock here on Earth. It's like granite. Yeah, the water per se on Titan is liquid methane. Yeah. <laughs> that's the liquid material. That's the, they Let's see. The that's water. Water. That's yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of the and comets are basically Jupiter. snowballs. Jupiter theor uh, they theorized that they have a layer of liquid oceans below just the far enough or the same thing with Saturn. You go far enough to pressure equalizes and stuff like that. So you go from gas, 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 what you look at is more liquid more liquidity, more liquidity, and they finally get some sort of water water so band they so I think it's one of the more common Possibly. We don't know the answer. The short answer is we don't know. Yeah, but it's much more likely to be more prevalent than silver. Which is, it only makes sense though, if you think about it, the star formation. Because everything comes from stars. Uh -huh. Silver, I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's very, it only will be found in silver. Right. Um, and, <laughs> and one of the things they learned in the recent ex explorations of, uh, of, moon, of the moon is that. Water is being formed in, in the regular with, with the solar wind. It's not like a pocket of like dig out or just water no. straight from it. It's, it's, it's like water and ice, like much like the ores and the it, it, It's created and it immediately sublimates. Mm -hmm. So it's not there long, but there's processes on the regular that are creating water uh, molecules that are not long lived. The, the water that they hope to use, utilize, is ices that are trapped in the Probably the poles and the other areas where they don't get sunlight. So what's the water turning into? Uh, back to hydrogen and oxygen. It just gets blown off. Uh -huh. yeah, or combines with something. You were asking about Mars and about water. Would you repeat the question again? Yeah, you, you said uh, we know that there was flowing streams on Mars. Uh -huh. Yeah, how is, how is that? Though? How is that? Though? Because well, of two rovers, uh, which is the the atmosphere also. Yeah. Well, what I was going to Yeah. The first thing we know about it is that we see the gullies on Mars. Like, we, the we, see, or we have the visual evidence that are canyons and whatnot. Um, the evidence that we found that says that it was actually water was from the Spirit of Opportunity Rovers, where we actually um, looked at these outcrops and found um, minerals. I think the big one was a mineral called Jarosite, which, as far as we know, only forms of liquid water, which 
with where Mars is in the solar system, that's the most likely liquid that can be Jaros. Jaros site or Jaros site? Yes, Jaros site is basically the center of those uh, hematite blue yeah. areas that they found. They also, uh, Blueberries? This is it's what they call the false color. They weren't blue. Yeah. <laughs> they, but they were about the size of blueberries. They were, they, looked, they were tiny, tiny, but they looked like the false color that looked like blueberries. That's kind of actually made him know as blueberries. And I actually have some because they form here on Earth too. Um, yeah. And they call them uh, Moki marbles. Uh, at least <laughs> out in uh, Utah where you can find them. Basically, they're just, they look like little rust balls because it all is iron oxide. But, um, but okay. also on that site that you referred to, which is a uh, the Eagle Crater, which was where Opportunity landed back in 2004. Steve Swaggers talked about it being an interplanetary, uh, uh, 300 million mile interplanetary hole in one. Yes. Because they literally, the bounce technique landed and it finally ended up in a crater, opened up, and lo and behold, what they were looking for was bedrock, and it was an airbag. They discovered the mission found right when they opened it up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, within a month, they confirmed the presence at one point in the past of flowing water on the surface. In the rocks and stuff like that. And so from there, we can infer uh, everything that we see on Mars that was probably, except maybe in cases of close volcanoes and stuff like that, was probably caused by water. And based on the minerals we've seen, at least that's what we know from, from physical evidence. Have any, have any rovers dug down? Uh, yes. Some of them have a little bit. Um, no more than this far so far. Um, the climbing on some Yes. The InSight mission, the next lander mission, uh, 2016, I think. In 2016 or 2018. One of the two is probably 16, but basically they'll be drilling a couple of meters in the surface, in the surface, in the base of the Phoenix. Yeah, the Phoenix yeah. lander actually did find water ice. I mean, it's not like they didn't know it was there, it's like not like they actually knew there was a white ice right below the surface, a uh, permafrost basically. Yeah. Uh, they basically dug there's some ice, uh, and just to look at it, and all of a sudden it's up uh, over. Uh, over so a couple of days, it's sublimated. So they basically dug again, took it, got the sand, put the samples, sucked it up, and tasted it basically. So, oh, it was, it. so it's sublimating because of the lack of pressure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Water in low, low pressures will, or liquid, will go from a solid, uh, solid liquid straight to gas. So and it's like a how or solid. Solid. Yeah, Sorry, right. sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, liquid straight to the gas is normal. normal. Yeah, yeah, it's normal. But I know science right. people watching on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like uh, if you're at sea level and you boil a uh, pot of water, it takes a lot more temperature than you boil it in Denver uh, because you have less pressure. Or Mars. Or you Mars. Can, Mars. Yeah. 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 If you're in space, you can boil water at you know negative 200 degrees. Something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, when you said sub supplement, I thought you meant like turn it into hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, it's it eventually does. It basically just goes straight that. from um, like solid gas. water to or solid gas. gas. Yeah. Curiosity is landing in the site. We get landed. Uh, first of all, we know there was once water there because of the same signatures in some of these other sites from opportunities and spirit. So we know there was once water there. So we, uh, so we were looking at this plane is no longer following water. It's just with clays and all the organics. So now we're looking at potential habitability in sites. And where, where it's at right now, for this direct solar conjunction, it is at basically the foot of a lake. Uh, what is it? It's a river delta. It's a river delta, basically. Yeah, if, <laughs> if, if, if if New Orleans was dry, that's what it would be down there. That's where it <laughs> right, right there at the, and they the took mouth of the Mississippi. The first samples, correct me if I'm wrong, the first samples they took was the first drill, first ever drill on the surface of on, on, on rock on Mars. Mm -hmm. Not just a straight hole right. surface. Drilled out the knee bar um, to get the inside of the rock, and it was a very clean, was it clay? I believe I think it was a clay, and I think they. Pretty much concluded that that area, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, pretty much was, didn't need his life there at one time, or it is now, but it was once palatable as we know. Have you heard of the Underground Salt Museum here? Uh, this has been probably almost two decades ago. One of the geology professors from WSU was giving a talk that I was listening to. He had been, been retired at the time I heard the talk. He may not be alive now. Anyway. Sorry. Passed away this did he? Okay. See the one that did the uh, the, the help help with create the search for water on, on Mars? Uh, okay, well the one that I'm thinking of. It may still be the same guy. What do you look like Yeah, I think he did that. Kind of a kind of a slight man. How what do you do the Hutchinson salt? 
650 feet underground. And uh, what happened was he would take his geology students through the mine each year and, so, and talk about the trapped seawater that's in the salt. And somebody went, is there possibly something still living in there? He went, oh, well, no. And he got thinking about it, but, you know, a spore or something might survive. And so he did a paper, and that paper got to the attention of NASA. And now he was called into one of the NASA conferences, and these conferences was what led to the search for water on Mars. And the, what is it, the Mexico salt mines, where they got the, uh, uh, the, the bacterium out of the, the, the water? Uh, I, I'm try I think it's I, New Mexico. Oh, yeah. I know. And... They, they drilled into one of those bubbles of water and they believe they have found a spore and have, have brought it, you know, allowed it to come to the cycle and become a bacterium. Uh, and uh, of course, controversy is it was contaminated or whatever, but they believe they did everything to prove that this is something that was in that water after all these, uh, you know, millions of years to, to uh, come back. Uh, from being trapped in there all this time. And so I've always found it fascinating that these underground salt salts has been one of the things that has led us to some of these res this research on Mars. Catalysts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, the bubbles of the uh -huh. environment. And uh, uh, the, I, what is the term of, that they, they were talking about that they think they've seen the kind of the, 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 not water, but, you know, muds flow on, on Mars. Um, well, I mean, they've seen where it's uh, percolated up to the surface. Uh -huh. and Slough. Yeah. The, the, apparently there's a place in Antarctica that has a similar geology, and they're, they're comparing the two and think that's what's going on on Mars, that it's moisture percolating up and muds are sliding down dunes and stuff. Yeah, well that's the thing is when you get to the equatorial areas, Mars will be right at the surface. It can actually get free from water. It can get up to 70 degrees. At the surface. At the surface. surface. If you're up here, it's full of freezing. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no view. So that's because the atmosphere is more than the state of the Yeah. But, so. but you get this heating, so it's actually possible for it to melt some of that permafrost in there, and then it does percolate at the surface. So if you're thinking, if, even as liquid water is existing in short spurts, you know, are there microbes that are thriving off of this that have been there for uh -huh. millions of years? We don't um, know. That's yeah. right. And we very well may not know until we have people, not only on Mars, because um, we've taken some of the some similar, you know, where I eat it, where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. We've taken those to predominantly old desert where we don't reside. We can find mine really easily with a you know, hammer and chisel, basically. Mm -hmm. It's but the they're still arguing whether or not Viking found life. It on <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they are. And, and, and until they go to the Viking site and dig in that place, and, and, and somebody will say, well, you should have looked over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should have looked at this cactus over here. <laughs> Spirit and, Opera, <laughs> Spirit and Opportunity are the Mars Exploration Rovers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Stephen Squire is the lead. Was it? I don't know if he's still uh, there. He may not be. It, it, so, these things are almost 10 years old. Yeah. Well, yeah. 10 years old would be in transit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, which is why most of these programs are a once in a lifetime for anybody who's oh, working on them. Yes. And uh, so, he uh, had another good reason to do things more often. Uh, and, uh, they are going to read. Finally, you start reproducing things like curiosities. Like, uh -huh. The next rover is going to be based on curiosity. Uh -huh. The next lander is going to be based on people. Uh -huh. so. And uh, so, uh, probably, I, I think you could, could say he is the most successful robotic investigator of anybody in, in, uh, in scientific history. And he well, believes, well you know, and he believes boots on the ground are the way to go. <laughs> I mean, the most successful robotic guy thinks boots on the ground is the way to go. And the thing is, I mean, it doesn't matter how advanced the robot you sit up there, but you, you can sit there and you have curiosity to sit and look at a rock for a week, and it's not going to tell you anything more than what a geologist can do. 
reaching down, picking it up, looking underneath it, number one, but then sitting there breaking it open and then figuring out what it is within a minute. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And then they move on to the next one, and they figure out what it is. take curiosity, you know, three weeks. So, <laughs> it's it's it takes progress. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm with intense programming. That's yeah. right. And then the programming can screw be screwed up by human error. <laughs> or the, or, the sun. or, or the cosmic rays. Right. Why not some of the things we just got? Right. The sun's in the way. We shot in a, you know, a few things and sending the data back once, and then we'll probably send it back again because we aren't getting everything. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is quite off topic. It's just something in general. How, I guess I have to do that. I can't even have myself since I could do how far away it is. It's just simple geometry. Unless somebody knows how many days. Is Mars literally out of communication? Not just not just out of bad communication, not just in bad communication, um, but from the sun, but just literally completely behind the sun. How many days are out of the sun? I think it's about a month. Is it only a whole month? Well, completely behind the sun? Well, not maybe completely behind the sun. It's one thing saying it, it's, it's one thing not being able. I'm talking visual. Completely. Visual completely, it may only be a week or two because I mean it's still moving. Yeah, Mars. that's true. That's true. Sense of fairly large objects from the particular yeah. perspective of the sky. Yeah. Plus, we're also moving at the same time, so we're adding some of the time to it because yeah, yeah. we're changing our perspective. Yeah. If we were just in one perspective, it's hard to move. So, I know that overall, it's a month because they want to be on the safe side for some of the command. Yeah, you know, the signal and have to pass through a coronal mass ejection on this radio Shut your shut your battery down. Shut your battery down and don't move the signal. Um, uh, but anyways, yeah. I would go to Mars. Would you go to Mars? You would? How about you? Uh it actually right, like, what? If, 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 if I thought it was technologically I, I mean, if, if I felt like I was useful, if I thought I was useful. It's like you go there and there's like a specific task. You can I promise you, yeah, I mean, was, if they're doing it right, they will be. Yeah, there'll probably be some screening. Some what? Some screening. Screening. You know, decide, you know, you got this skill. I'm just afraid to run for because one of the things I'm talking about is. I'm serious. Well, you could have something making bricks for you, but you need somebody making brick arches for underground tunnels for larger living space. That could be done with a spacesuit in a person. Um, and maybe some in situ glue and whatever you need to do for making bricks. Yeah. That's completely within our technology. We can build it now. It's just a matter of sitting there and how much it costs to sit there. The first so, large colony is Adobe. It, it probably was Adobe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Adobe was the. You know, uh -huh. some sort of lining on the inside uh -huh. that would give you a seal. Yeah, so with, uh, with the radiation levels from the sun and the thin atmosphere, that's uh, why you how thick would you need to build? Like, uh, little... I'm not sure what it is, but I think it's like one or two feet of dirt, Martian dirt to even really fine. Similar, similar, thing moon, similar thing on the moon, too. Similar thing on the moon. Because see, they're, talking, they're talking about these big, low inflatable modules. Uh, that if they would, you know, just lay it down on the ground and inflate it, and then bury it with a couple of feet, then it would be protected. That's what it's just so heavy. That's why you can't sit it there with you. Can't sit the it with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to utilize it. Well, you could, but but you know, the expanse, the time, yeah, and all that. that. And when it's right there, you can just you know, already grab a shovel and go. Curiosity is trans have already proved that you know, the radiation doses even during solar maximum would be completely fine. Which which is kind of interesting because Curiosity was the first vehicle they ever actually put on something to measure the radiation yes. out there. Yeah. Everything so else was just hmm, so basically, what is it? Oh, it must be this. Your percentage <laughs> of getting cancer will only increase by a couple percent. Uh -huh. Much like you know, a whole career of you know uh, probably pilot pilots. Well, yeah, pilots flying up. Uh, level yeah. Level. yeah, yeah. Probably similar if you're an X-ray tech. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's completely. Do a that. A lot, lot less problem than if you slick lead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, you, you said that if you thought it was technically feasible. I would argue that it is. It's just a matter of cost at this point. Mm -hmm. It's how much are you willing to pay, and how much can you get the cost down. Yeah, and technically we could if we wanted to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to send uh, 
hundreds, hundreds of people. Yeah. So and it's an economy of scale too. So it will just send, you know, the first few missions, so what was it, like eight months to get there? Depending on your trajectory, how much you know, how much That's why there, how that's why I'm so there. interested in Nerva. That's one of the 30, 30 day mission ways of doing like it. How much are you willing to Because for the same fuel? amount of fuel, if you just you know the efficiency of a of an engine that we use now, uh, we basically fire it all off and coast. Now, if you take the same amount of fuel with a, an engine like Nerva, which superheats it, it's not how much mass you throw out the back end of a, a rocket; it's how fast you throw it out the back end it's of the rocket. It's still equations. Uh -huh. And so, what you do is you're able to do a very small amount for most of the trip at each moment and because of that your momentum builds up so much you 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 get there so much quicker and and of course it depends on you know trade-offs again like what we're talking about you know it, it may be not a 30-day mission maybe a 60-day mission if you're sending mass crew like 60 people to go land on mars like what i think uh -huh. that's what i want to do because mars crew right. or whatever or something will know what that is uh -huh. <laughs> he is the best yeah, I that's what it really is. But it, that's what that's his job. Um, by the way, if anybody wants some inside scoop of SpaceX quality, he wants to let me know if anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Even before SpaceX tweets it. <laughs> but it's uh, besides the point there. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Not quite but yeah, yeah, it's it's um But he, yeah. Within a couple of years it sounds like he's gonna be able to make a fully usable rocket. And once that's done, and I've said this a couple of times, it's a whole year old rocket train. Mm -hmm. If you can get it done where traffic is usable, um, it's easy. You know, cost to go to Mars is $500,000. If you're willing to go move there, it can be done. <laughs> and so that is one of the aspects. You know, I, uh, the, the T minus five I did last year was basically the, they have this thing that they call a reference mission. Yeah. And a reference mission can be anything from me pulling out this notepad and going, here's my mission, mm -hmm. to spending money on designing hardware and stuff on to do the mission. The, the uh, original reference mission that I found was Werner von Braun. The original one, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, was, uh, oh, back in the days of things of the Redstone and the V2. The V2, the Redstone is basically a modified V2. And so, uh, in fact, the curator at the time, the launch ring that that Redstone is on, even though it has uh, Air Force tags on it and stuff, was recovered from Germany. It was a not Nazi V2 launch ring. The parameters of the Redstone match the V2, so you could put, it, put the Redstone on the, that launch ring. Uh, unfortunately, he's not around anymore for me to confirm that. But that's, that's, I believe it too. Uh, and uh, but the end result is that wow, it would only take 600 or so launches to get enough material up there to build the vehicles that we need to go to Mars. So that's a reference mission that... Is it 600? Yeah, 600. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, only, so, only. so but we, we, we talk about the political will and the cost. 600 flights just to get the stuff together to go. And unfortunately, about the media stuff, uh, most people still think that's true. <laughs> Probably. Which right. is why they think Mars mission equal a trillion dollars or more. Oh, yeah. And, and and it also depends on your reference mission. Absolutely. Am I going there? Boots on the ground. Come back. You know the the you know Do half you a year know. there, year there, half a year back to your mission. The boots right. on the ground mission. Yeah, you, know, uh, you can do that with one one rocket. Well, maybe uh, two. Yeah, maybe yeah. Two. You know, two would make it easier. Two would make it. Yeah. Two uh, if you want to set up a base, whole different thing. Uh, but. You know, it, 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 everything depends on that reference point of what it is you want to do. But just like I was saying earlier about the the commander being so upset when they said, "Oh, we're going to be able to go to Mars now," we've been able to go to Mars since the seventies. It isn't anything new that we've been able to go to Mars. It's how much we want to pay, spend and how safe we want to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. But they have I, to have the will, and I think there are plenty of people with the will to get the people that can control the purse stuff. Uh -huh. yeah. Because if they, if there's a bad thing that happened in this risk averse society on their watch, oh yeah, they allowed it to be a tick party. Somebody, yeah, challenge. Apollo one almost killed Apollo. Yeah, Challenger almost killed the shuttle program. 
Columbia effectively did kill the show, show for, uh, And The only reason why uh, the other ones didn't was because we had a defined ball. We had we had a quote unquote enemy per mm -hmm. se. Uh, Apollo one, we had still had to beat the rest of the moon. Kennedy, Kennedy was a martyr. We had to beat uh -huh. Kennedy. Uh -huh. um, and then we had Challenger, which of uh, the it was such a political badge of honor. The whole point of the space shuttle back in the day was to build a space station, and the Russians were always trying to build their space station. Well, there is a. Yeah. Well, so actually, I, 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 I got to disagree that the shuttle was ever built, designed. The, 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 the shuttle was, as it is, was a replacement for having the program of having the space station. And a smaller vehicle to go to the space station. It was a lot of. Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a replacement for everything they were planning on doing, and becoming the only they, thing. They figured if we had at least this, we could get the other ones. And you look at the sh the, bay, the cargo bay. Anybody know why the size of the cargo bay is that big? Because smaller would have been easier. Because the if we were going to build that, it was going to be our only launcher. Nothing else would we wouldn't have any other problems. <coughs> that's still was only cost. And they so you know, because they thought that was the only way they were going to get enough flights per it's year to bring the com. And scale. that cargo bay is designed around the spy satellites the Air Force needed to be in there. And that the whole the whole whole size of the shuttle is all around spy satellites. And there were certainly several missions that did that we may never know what those that's right. missions were used to. And for. there is a a launch pad at Vandenberg that's been remodified one more time that just before Challenger was almost finished in it to be the Air Force shuttle launch site because they wanted to launch into polar orbits with the shuttle. Uh huh. And if it hadn't been for Challenger, we, we would have launched out of Vandenberg as well as Kim. It was already done. Yeah, it was, it was actually a great image. Uh, I think it was of Enterprise. Yeah, with, with the. They were ready to launch. All they needed to do was take a shuttle back. Uh -huh. and, then and, Challenger all that. and Challenger changed all that. Challenger changed all that because the Air Force was looking for a reason to get rid of it. Well, yeah, I think um, right. Because they knew that I don't know about my life, but it's mm -hmm. a massive thing. And therefore, you know, yeah. and the only reason why the Air Force was forced to do this is because the Congress was forced to do it. That's right. All the uh huh. Oh. And then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, Atlas looked like a good idea again. Because <laughs> they were going to end the Atlas. They were going to end the, oh, is this Enterprise? Yes, Enterprise. Oh, wow. Yeah. And to show, uh, um, go back to the other image, too, with the, uh, the assembly building as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, right there, right there. Top, 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 top. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. the rolling. That was, yeah. Uh, yeah, both of those, that, that was basically a clamshell, wasn't it? Yeah. Both of those rolled. In the place around it, and then they rolled away for a launch. Wow. <laughs> Definitely different than the policies that we have to do. Because they were designing the launch deck from scratch around the station. Right. We were using a missing hard barrel for a yeah. Apollo. So, anyways. So both of those structures uh -huh. pulled yeah. away. Yeah. Wow. You just do it on, you can put the vehicle up, you didn't have to move it at all. It was yeah. just ready to go. Yeah. Bradley said this is what the Air Force wanted. And once again, the holy grail for the Air Force is fast. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. X thirty seven was a NASA project. So yeah, yeah, it was going to be it was going to be the uh, lifeboat for the space station, a larger version of it. And, but the X thirty seven was designed once again for the cargo bay, and uh, they were going to fly it up in a shuttle. The mini shuttle was going to be in the shuttle. They were going to test it and then fly it back, and that all died when they started deciding to use the Soyuz instead, which is when we went from seven people to six people. Which we will go back to seven people on the space station once crushed two space. Yeah, that's maybe. That's what they said. Yeah, I know. That's what they said. Well, what they're saying is they're going to have four with any commercial food vehicle for the American side, at least one Russian on both and one American on both vehicles. That way, there's always a Russian on and, and, and realistically, they could put more than two rescue vehicles up there and have it a, even a bigger. Although water resources are still a big, big limitation. But uh, after after that program ended, it went to DARPA, and DARPA went, mm -hmm. what, you know, what do we do with this? And then the Air Force went, hey, hey we got an idea, <laughs> and, and they liked it. it. Hey, that's we right. Idea. But they liked it so much they built a second one. That's why we there's two. No, they never built the third one. Okay. 
they're, they're, they, but they, the, the Air Force people are actually talking about going to the sea, which would be the larger version that would be uh, the size of what the size that was going to be the lifeboat uh, uh, size of. The, so you could possibly have some people on board instead of that. No, we just don't know. It's getting pretty close to 4:30. So yeah. Okay. Well, no, we got a wreck. Well, we didn't get to you. Would what do you, you go to Mars? Um, I would not do the one-way thing. There you but, go. Um, yeah, I, I would. Well, I would probably only do a one-way to another planet if, oh, yeah. if the other planet had a self-sustaining ecosystem. Yeah, a generation ship or. Would you actually expect like, to get there? Like an Earth like planet. Or, or at least an Earth like planet. Yeah. Like yeah. Something, yeah. something I around your home. I just, just not, I mean. Well, that's why I said that. Well, yeah. Simone. I mean, but it's got to be there long enough that it's kind of established and, like, sort of become a natural part of the environment. Like, it's too, it just feels just, too, like, artificial. So does it close now? Yeah. Look at Biosphere too. Yeah. But um, that's his enclosed environment, and maybe that would be. And I'm not even say I'm not even saying that I, I uh, that I want Mars to become that. I'm just saying that I personally oh, yeah. wouldn't go. And there are people pushing for never terraforming but, Mars. Uh, yeah. Most people will not get out, and unless there is like indigenous life, and even then, that may not be the case. I think a lot of that would depend on whether or you know. The, L5 has a resurgence or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Because when we talk about bucks and everything, the cost of terraforming right now is so expensive. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, I agree. Uh, it's going to be a multi. I think it's going to be a hundred process just to get the atmosphere to pump the water on the surface. Without very technology. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's put the atmosphere on the cat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.